Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to call the August 2nd meeting of the Common Council to order. Uh, I will ask the clerk to call the roll. Elder Person Vitelli. Here. Weigel. Here. Grisham. Here. Haas. Alderman Haas is excused. Keen. Here. Lysak. Here. Reinke. Here. Rote. Here. Stefanski. Here. Tenorio. Here. Nine present, one excused. We have a quorum. Please rise if you are able and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led this evening by Alderman Vitelli. Okay, we will move on to item D on the agenda. Uh, we have one public hearing. I will ask the clerk to read that out. Ordinance to amend the zoning map for certain properties along West Beecher Street and West National Avenue in alignment with the 2040 Comprehensive Plan, amending Section 1901. Thank you. I'll turn it over to Mr. Chair when you're ready. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, members of the Council. This hearing is to um, undo some split zoning that's occurred in our city since probably about the 1930s. Um, we've got about 350 split zone properties. That's a property with more than one zoning district upon it. And it leads to some uncertainty when you're dealing with, you know, as a property owner or um, even with staff at the city level or appraisers um, and, um, and banks when refinancing. So we'd like to simplify it by eliminating split zoning in certain properties we'll get into in here in a moment. Uh, instead of having two or three zoning districts in many cases, just going to a single zoning district. Um, so that is the best practice that we're trying to achieve. In the past, you can see on the map on the right, um, what prior city planners had done over, over the years was to simply take from a, the center line in Floyd Road in this, in this case out about 200 feet and then just draw the zoning line. And that's sort of irrespective of the configuration or the geometry of some of our properties. You can see how that zoning line affects some of those properties, which are, you know, single family or uh, duplexes, uh, but zone commercial. So that's one of the, an example of what we're trying to achieve. And if it's typically, if you have a single family zone property, what we're going to be doing is going to an RB or residence district. And if you have a commercial property, we're more than likely going to be rezoning to fully, you know, just to commercial. So this is the focus we have. Um, group this into two batches that we're going to look at tonight, both National Avenue and Beecher Street. We have some other um, uh, streets or corridors on the horizon that we'd come back to the council with in the future. We're looking at about 95 lots on Beecher Street and about another 91 on, on uh, National Avenue. So this is kind of a classic example in the 8,000 8, to 8,400 block of uh, Beecher Street. We'll start with the Beecher Street corridor. Uh, where you have the commercial shop on the corridor, in this case the northwest east corner of 84th and Beecher, and then right behind it you have the neighborhood. And in this case, the homes are actually, a couple of the homes are actually zoned um, commercial, uh, one fully, number 13, and then the other one partially, partially RB residents, and the other part commercial. So we're really just trying to undo that here and go to um, rezone these two properties here, as shown down below in the proposed map, to RB. And the commercial shop would remain commercial, and the residential homes would then be thereby rezoned to RB residence district. Similar situation along uh, further going moving east along Beecher Street, uh, many many areas within this corridor here where you have um, properties. In this case, a school in the uh, 67 to 7300 block Jefferson School. Uh, the frontage along Beecher is zoned commercial. The back portion is zoned RB. In this case. We're looking to um, proactively rezone this property to RC. Uh, we could have certainly just rezoned it to um, uh, as an option to, to commercial, but should the school uh, cease to be a school or want to become something else if it's sold, uh, you know, we'd rather see something along the line of multifamily development in this area, um, or perhaps even uh, uh, some limited amount of commercial like daycares or RC will even allow other schools. But um, it will also protect against some more uh, harsher types of commercial uses that you may not want to live next to. So that's the reason why we're going to multifamily RC. 
Another classic case in the corner of 71st and Beecher, where you have the tavern on the corner, and then homes uh, just to the south of the tavern. Um, right here on the map, this is the existing zoning map up on top. Here's the bar, and then properties 81 and 82 are single family homes, this one and this one, which are either fully or partially zoned commercial. So on the proposed map down below, what we're proposing to do is go to a, um, uh, from a commercial zone on that first house south of the bar, and then to also residential on the second house south of the bar. It's moving along to the National Avenue corridor, sort of a similar situation, but uh, one unique uh, portion here on 92nd, just between National and Lincoln Avenue. There's a chunk of about 16 proper, about 15 properties that are zoned um, RA3. And the rest of the neighborhood around it, though, is, is all RB district. So in this case, we're simply on the right here proposing to go to an RB district. And what ends up happening is that, it, that these lots are actually, uh, will, will conform to that RB district. Um, within the RA district, um, it's not that they don't conform now, but it's, it's more fitting with the surrounding neighborhood, and it'll probably line up better within the RB district than it would in the RA district. And then we're also um, cleaning up some of these properties here, properties uh, 23 through 27, where you can see that some of these commercial properties along the frontage of National Avenue in this case are commercial, but then there's portions of them that are RB. Tiny little sliver back here that's RB, and then you have homes south of National, south of those commercial areas that are um, partially zoned commercial as well, and we're going to take those. Actually, these would become, these would go to C2. Uh, in this case, we're looking at creating a little bit more of a node here on the corner of uh, 91st, uh, 90th, 91st, and National um, in that area. Uh, just similar situations along the uh, 80, 87 to 8,900 blocks of National Avenue. Um, squaring up properties here, this portion of 34 is RB. We're going to make it fully C2. And this property here, number 41, uh, as exists and then as proposed over here to go to C2. The National Avenue block and the 8,600 block, um, there's an existing laundry mat along the frontage of National Avenue. The frontage is commercial, the back portion is light industrial. And then you have uh, a warehouse, I think it's Cook Specialty back here, which has three different zoning districts from commercial, residential, light industrial, and then also uh, commercial and light industrial here. We're proposing to go do light industrial on those two existing um, uh, industrial properties. In the park district, this is actually Franklin School and then part of Honey Creek Park. You can see that the park district actually encroaches into the school district land somewhat. We're proposing just to convert the entire school district lands from three different zoning districts in this case to, to one RC district, which is multifamily, and then just sort of shoring up the, uh, the park area um, along its property lines as P1. Corner of 84th, 84th, just south of 84th and National. Um, the five properties that you see here um, are all zoned um, uh, C2 currently on the existing zoning map. What we're proposing to go to is an RB district, which is consistent with the rest of the neighborhood to the south. In the 78 to 7900 block, uh, similar fashion of uh, with uh, the Dot Key School. The frontage and the existing zoning map is commercial, the back is residential, and we're looking at going to RC multifamily on that one. And there, is some other, there are some other changes here along National Avenue where we're just sort of cleaning up those edges that uh, encroach, where you have commercial encroaching into uh, uh, residential properties, and then some commercial properties that are partially a uh, different zoning district, we're just making those C2. The uh, City Library in the 7400 block of National is another example of one that we're going to go to from a split zone C2 and RB to an RC district and also proposing, you know, just cleaning up some of the properties north of the library along National Avenue from two districts to, to one commercial district and then some other examples here on the corner of uh, 71st and uh, I believe that's um, Mitchell. Um, that is going to go to C2. It's like the last one property on that block, and the current zoning map is RB. And, you know, should this uh, area develop, it may be an assembly of properties. We foresee this as being potentially more of a commercial 
uh, adaptive reuse or, or future redevelopment than, than just a one-off RB, you know, single-family home. The former Castec property, which is vacant in the corner of 64th and National, is split zoned, and we're looking at rezoning that to C3 commercial, so the property is fully zoned commercial. Um, and then also on the corner of, um, there's some multifamily uh, development on the corner of just across the street east of the farmer's market between 64th and 5th and National that we'd be going to RC multifamily with. And then some other, uh, you know, just sort of sporadic changes over here to the block to the east, again, just sort of assembling that block to a commercial rezoning at 62nd and 63rd and National north of Orchard. The uh, Wells Fargo Bank on the corner of 62nd and National is another example of one property with three zoning districts, C2 residents and a C3 zoning. We want to make it all C3. And then on the corner of uh, 60, uh, I'm sorry, 50, 58th and uh, National across the street from the Kegels area that um, is going to be sort of squared up as uh, C3 with one property up here that's partially commercial be becoming all residential. It's a single family property. So we have um, sent out two different um, uh, notices to the neighborhood property owners that are, that are affected, and that it is, and then also a publication within our uh, official paper. We also conducted a neighborhood meeting on July 7th. Um, we've had some, some concerns, a lot, a lot of questions. Um, you know, are my taxes going to increase? Uh, no, they won't unless you convert your property from a residence to a commercial property, then you'd be taxed differently as a commercial property. Um, and, uh, you know, will it make my property nonconforming? Um, and, you know, with, with more than one zoning district, if you, if you are a split zone property, um, in some cases we see two or three different zoning districts on a property, you're probably nonconforming already. And then just making it, uh, zoning it to commercial or to residential as, as in the presentation here really isn't going to change much. So it's, it's really not going to impact property owners. We see this as more of a house cleaning exercise in terms of the remapping of the city by eliminating split zoning. And thank you. Thanks for the presentation and the public hearing. Are there any questions or comments from the members of the Common Council? Okay, seeing none, are there any questions or comments from the members of the audience? If there are, I would ask that you come up to the podium and push the button with the little figure on it and please give us your name and address for our official record and then sign in, I believe, at the back or in front of you. Curtis Oquist, 73 West Lincoln Avenue. Uh, How is that going to change uh, the tax base for City of West Dallas? Um, if, you, if you have a residential home now, if you have a single-family home on Lincoln Avenue, for instance, and it's being rezoned to commercial, for instance, um, it's a little hypothetical because we're talking about Lincoln Avenue, it's, and you continue to use your property as a single-family home, it's not going to impact your taxes at all. What about duplex? Same. No, no impact. No differences? No. In now, taxes? if you were to convert that duplex, for instance, to an, a, a four-family apartment or to a mixed-use development, yes, it will, it will change your taxes and you'll be, you'll be uh, taxed on a commercial level versus a residential level. How is that going to change the tax base for the city of Wisconsin, for the city of West Dallas, though? Is if it going you, to raise taxes? If you for, invest in your property, you are effectively, you know, you're, you know, it, it increases the, the taxable value that way. So if you if you invest in your property and you make an improvement to your property, you convert it from a duplex to a, a four-family apartment, you know your value is going to increase, and and so will your taxes. So incrementally, the change would be an increase to the city of West Dallas the and question, to its taxing jurisdictions. Pardon me. The question I have is, is it going to raise the tax base for the city of West Dallas? No. The tax base is going to stay the same no matter what? With, well, that's, that's a question for the assessor. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Okay. You have to push the green button, please. Thanks. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm at 2131 South 90th. I'm like the first time owner, so 
I don't understand what like all this is about. Fair enough. Sure. Uh, yeah. I, I'm just I'm trying to figure out what all this is. You know. Yeah, rezoning. we can probably just if we want, we can just probably talk to you offline. If okay, if, that's yeah, fine. like during recess, if you have a few minutes. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody else have questions? That's the sign of a very solid presentation, Steve. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, we will close the public hearing and we will then move on to item E, which is citizen participation. This is when the council and I can receive um, comments, information from members of the public during this 30 minute period. Same format, each speaker must introduce with their name and address and we ask that you limit your comments to one statement of no more than five minutes. Does anybody wish to address the council under citizen participation this evening? Yes. Sure. Okay, hello. My name is Alejandra Hernandez, and I reside at 845 South 75th Street. Um, I am here because I've been having some issues I've been dealing with, and I don't know which way to go from here. Um, I've been a part of this community for nine years now. I um, have been... Uh, a new owner recently bought my building um, once COVID had happened, and ever since then we have been having a lot of issues with him. Pardon me for getting emotional about this right now. Um, I exercised my right as a tenant to get repairs done in my house that were needed to get done. And when I exercised my right by calling the Chamber of Commerce, I was served with... Sorry for shaking. No, take your time. Served with a 60-day notice because they refused to do repairs to my property. I've been there since my daughter was one years old. I've tried very hard as a single parent to get my kids into a good district. My son has graduated high school from West Dallas School District. I've been a part of this community. I do what I'm supposed to do as a resident. I try to maintain a good household there. Um, I don't know where else to go from here. I'm using every avenue I can only because of me making this one complaint as my right as a tenant in order to get repairs done with just basic maintenance being done. I'm now getting told that I have 60 days to leave my home. I don't know where to go from here. I have tried the Chamber of Commerce. I try to give them time before I call the city inspector because they had the property management company has asked me to give them time because in their words, they were too busy with their other projects and their other businesses to do repairs to my house. The only reason why they're now choosing to do any type of repairs to my house is because they want to sell the home now. So um, I think that they don't want me there anymore because of me wanting to get just simple repairs done. We are the only house on that block that does not have security lights. We have no porch light. We have no backlight. We have no one coming to check on the property whatsoever. Last week we had a vehicle left by four kids that was a stolen Kia parked right directly in front of my home. We now have to worry about other issues coming into our property without safety lights. That's not very, uh, it's not something I want to come home to when I come home late from work. Um, as well as um, just simple maintenance things that should be done by law that he's required to do. When I ask that those things get done, I'm told give us time and then I'm good served a notice, which I don't know where to go from here because if I continue, I, I don't know where to go from here basically. And I so don't know. I, I can tell you two things. One, one is um, because your lease is technically a contract between two private parties, the city is somewhat hindered on what it can do. But I think we can probably try to find some advocacy groups or some you know, potential legal services you might be able to partner with or try to connect with. Um, I'd say the same thing I said earlier is if you if you can stick around for a few minutes and we can talk to you when we break it for recess. Thank you. I would greatly appreciate that. Sure. Any help that I could get. Sure. Thank you so much. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to address the council under citizen participation? Curtis Oquist, 73 West Lincoln Avenue. Um, question I have is, there's been four outages in the month of July from electric. I've contacted We Energies and they're saying they're trimming 
trimming branches and everything else four times in one month isn't that enough what does it take I, I contacted tried to tried to call Tracy here I got no answer from him I, I, I contacted Martin he gives me a phone number for we energies what's this so, taxation without representation here huh so much like the um contract with the landlord we just spoke about we energies is a private company that we do not oversee we can obviously contact them on your behalf and we have done that for people in the past but they're a private utility and it's not just my it's not just my house it's the I whole know. area i've heard from other residents too and it's, well, it's so what are you guys doing about it then huh we do not run we energies i i get that that's like telling you us to make the railroads us, though, to run at a certain time we do represent you and i said well, then do it. at this point are you going to let me I speak would, or I would, I would encourage this to end there's not supposed to be a debate during public comments so I, I i don't mean to cut this off but if you wish to continue i do it outside of the meeting please thank you Does anybody else wish to address the council under citizen participation this evening? Okay, we will close citizen participation and we will move to item F. Our standing committees uh, will be meeting during recess and the room numbers are listed on the bottom of page one. I do just wanna take a minute to note that um, license and health, public works and advisory will be meeting in the common council chambers as opposed to room 128 due to the setup for the elections and the early voting, which will segue very smoothly into the mayor's report. Um, one thing I do wanna mention that there is an election in a week, uh, the 9th, and I hope everybody is paying attention and ready to go cast their ballot if they haven't already. There is a primary for governor, there is a primary for Senate, among other things. So please take a minute to learn the candidates. Uh, there's also a state Senate primary for the western edge of town and I think there might be a state treasurer primary as well um, but then the other thing I just want to mention is the um, Community Services Bureau of the West Dallas Police Department held a very well attended and successful national night out event last Monday uh, it was a little different format it was nice to have that back after a little bit of a hiatus and I want to thank all the um, Community members that participated, volunteered, and came out. I bumped into Alderman Rote, Alderman Weigel. Um, I actually had a, I saw Rosalie there, I believe, and even former Alderman Chaplasky made an appearance, so it was a star-studded cast. Um, but I just wanna thank that department for putting that event on and thank everybody that made that happen. That does conclude the mayor's report. Do we have any reports from the alder persons this evening? Mayor Devine. Alder person Keen. Um, we just wanted, Alderwoman Grisham and I want to announce that the newly created Conrad Gardens Neighborhood Association is having their first annual uh, cleanup and ice cream social on August 20th from 9 to 11. So come meet us out at Reservoir Park and grab a bucket, help us clean up the neighborhood a little bit, and then stay for the ice cream. Thank you. Any other Alder persons reports? Mayor Devine. Alderman Weigel. Um, first, I'd like to issue an apology to the residents on the 1400 block of 72nd Street. Maybe not an apology, just an explanation. There was a, a kind of a special event block party last Saturday, and I understand that some of the residents were not made aware of it. I can assure you that our current policies were followed by the applicant that well, the street was closed off, but our current policy only requires an applicant for like a block party to get half of the residents to sign off on it. And we don't have a notification for the other people who didn't sign off on that. We will be addressing that quickly so it doesn't happen again. I know that some of the residents were caught by surprise on that. Um, so again, an apology and explanation about what happened last Saturday right over here on 72nd Street. Um, also a reminder that it's that happy time of year again. State Fair starts this Thursday in case anybody's not aware. There will obviously be parking impacts around the community. And once again, I ask, you know, we have company coming to town, especially if you live in the area, second district, third district, or anywhere in town, maybe take a little time and take a little bit better care of your property, make sure your lawn is mowed, maybe pick up the neighbor's trash if they haven't gotten to it. We want to put on our good face for our visitors and have a good time at the fair. Thanks. Thanks, Alderman Weigel. Any other comments from the older persons? Alder person Reinke.
houses, uh, obstacle course, the slide, and the bouncy house itself. Uh, we volunteers to make sure that everything was done safely with the children, that it was a, a fun time for them because they didn't have to pay. They didn't have to pay to play because the cab was picked up by a gentleman in our community named Don Hall. He used the proceeds from, uh, actually it was from the, the dump tank, um, and paid for all those children to have, have the evening of play. And uh, I really want to thank him and commend him publicly because that was, there were hundreds of children that uh, nobody knows probably what he did, but I, I commend him. That was a, a really nice gesture on his part. Um, sometimes we aren't aware that there are angels in our, in our, our community that, that help us out in various ways. And, um, it's wonderful to know that there's people like this and, and, and helping other people and making sure our community does Thank you. Thank you. Any other other persons reports? Mayor Devine. Alderman Lysak. I move for approval of the July 12, 2022 Common Council Minutes. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any changes or amendments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? The ayes have it. The minutes are approved. Item J, we have no standing committee reports. And item K. Mayor Devine. Alderman Leipzig. If there's no objection from any council member, I will move that the consent agenda be approved as presented. Second. There is a motion and a second. Any discussion? No discussion. I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Alderperson Vitale. Aye. Weigel. Aye. Grisham. Aye. Keen. Aye. Leisick. Aye. Reinke. Aye. Rote. Aye. Stefanski. Aye. Tenorio. Aye. Nine in favor, one excused. Motion carries. Mayor Devine. Alderman Lysick. I move that we stand in recess until conclusion of the committee meetings. Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We are in recess.